Now that we have a new eight megapixel camera on our new iPhone 4S's, we're gonna need a better photo service to share those photos with other people. And Pic2 has a different idea than the other ones like Instagram and, and uh, PicPlease. <laughs> Who are you? So my name is Jonathan Slimak. Um, originally trained as an architect. I went to architecture school in Brooklyn, in Pratt. Um, I come from Venezuela. I moved to the States over 12 years ago. I worked as an architect for around four years before becoming completely frustrated with the industry and diving head on into technology. Very cool. And you're making a photo sharing uh, service for an iPhone. What, what the hell are you thinking? Because that's a crowded <laughs> space, isn't it? Exactly. I actually liked very much your introduction because I think it's a great starting point to talk to about Pic2. We actually think Instagram is a perfect translation of photography to the camera phone. We we're all use Instagram every day and think it's, it works perfectly for that. With Pic2, we're actually at the opposite end of the spectrum. In Pic2, uh, explores the ch the changing the, the a trend a changing trend in photography. So when you think of it, a lot of the pictures that you see on your social network, you won't go back and see a week or a month from now. So we we phrase that change as pictures moving from objects of memory to objects of interaction. Pic2 is a platform f to use pictures as objects of interaction. And what I really like about Pic2 is. Uh, you can, when you save a photo, you can put a title on, onto it, but it's not a title just for that photo. It's a, it's a topic for all photos that might come in the future on that topic. Like if I'm taking a picture of the World Trade Center, I create, hey, great photos of the World Trade Center, and then you can come on and add a photo to that, right? And, I, and now we have a World Trade Center uh, stream of photos, right? Correct. So in Pic2, every photo that anybody uploads is the beginning of a conversation. Anybody can then respond to that picture or start a theme or a new thread of their own. So really all these pictures are have a value within the context they're being served to. And you're trying to create a story, a narrative through photography. You don't allow people to put uh, comments underneath photos, right? You're not Correct. like Instagram. Instagram has a little comment underneath each photo and you can have a conversation there. But here, if I take a picture of you, I can start a conversation Correct. that's all photographic. And so n the next person has to answer that com that photo with something about you or something opposite of you or something about Correct. an answer to that photo. Almost. Correct. So yeah, w we're keeping kind of uh, the, the belief of restriction at the forefront of the product we're building. And, and we're trying to stimulate creativity through this concept of restriction. It reminds us uh, a little bit of Twitter in their early days, of putting restriction and maybe making people find ways to uh, you know, work around those restrictions, and it generated a lot of these interesting ideas uh, about how people can communicate to each other. And I, I think we're doing a very similar approach through pictures. And when you think about it, the, the beauty around it is that pictures as a language you, it goes beyond any culture, any, you know, so you can have someone in Africa talking to someone in Brazil, talking to someone in, you know, Alabama, and they don't need to have the same backgrounds or know the same language, but, you know, we like to say we all talk picture. Yeah, if I take a picture of the World Trade Center like I did when I passed by it in the cab, um, after I take that picture, I can search for a topic about World Trade Center, right? Correct. I just start typing World Trade Center and it'll bring up a search, or it, tell me how, it, how that works. Correct. So uh, we do have the option to, after you take a picture, to f look for streams to where you want to add them to. However, Pic2 is not meant to be a cataloging tool. We don't want all the pictures from the World Trade Center to be on the same stream. We want to stimulate short, specific interactions around these pictures. So a good example could be what I'm drinking right now. So it, when you think about having a very public interaction of pictures of what you're drinking right now may have little value. However, if, you're, if you start a stream and participate what you're drinking right now with you and three of your friends, you know, even though that stream may have like five or six pictures, every time someone adds to that stream, that can be, that can be a very sat, sat, satisfying interaction for all the people involved. Interesting. 
What have, you, what have you learned by doing this and maybe bring in Techstars? Because we're here in Techstars New York and you're part of the, what, the fall uh, 2011 class yeah, yeah. that's coming out in a week. So yeah. congrats on, uh, on maybe not getting sleep for the next week. <laughs> 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 but tell me what, what it's like and what you're learning from this experience. So we've been really lucky to be a part of Techstars. I think the biggest thing that Techstars does is has solidified our, our place in the New York ecosystem. So, uh, you know, after going through these three months of the program, we really feel confident and we have uh, the network in place to execute on the company that we want to build. So that's, that's the huge value that came by having Techstars. Also, the ability to be working with another 11 companies in the program have really enriched and have made this experience a lot richer and just and you're probably getting good uh, uh, coaching and good advisement from the alumni and the network that uh, is Techstars has, right? Correct. Uh, that's another huge part of Techstars, which is we've been working with incredible mentors, uh, you know, people that I would have never been able to talk to previous to this have are helping us build this company and turning our vision into our reality. So we all feel super lucky to count on that. Yeah. That what, experience. What's it been like to uh, have Bloomberg TV uh, film a reality show here as part of, as part of the uh, TechStars experience? Well, actually, we were lucky that that did not happen during our program. What everybody's seeing today on TV is actually the last program, but you know, it's a lot of fun to be seeing how the previous class went through all the experience they did. Very cool. And uh, are you raising funding right now? Is that part of what you're doing at the demo day next week? Well, we or just this video will probably come out at the same t time, but. Tell me about what you're hoping to get out of Demo Day. Well, we just closed a significant round of funding from very good investors. Uh, the most important part is these investors share our vision, so they want to move forward with us. We're not necessarily raising money right now, but we are in conversations with people who want to participate in this project and help us move faster to where we want to get to. So. Very cool. Well, good luck, and uh, it's on the iPhone, Correct. iTunes store right now. You can right find now. it on the iTunes store or on pick2.com. And it's spelled a little e e weirdly, yeah. so how do you spell it? It's P-I-I-C-T-U. The double I is meant because it's a social pick. So we're coining the term pick with double I as a, as a picture response on pick2. Very cool. Thank you so much for Thank uh, you, showing Robert. it to me. Appreciate it.